Good afternoon and welcome along. Thanks for tuning back in. It's um, cool to see new people subscribing up and where you're watching. That's awesome to see you to see you watching from the state to Ireland, UK, um, Tassie. It's it's awesome. Um, so this afternoon I'm just going to go through and move Dad's cows at the moment. He's away at the beach for the day, so that's cool. They've gone over to see some friends, and so I'm just standing here by the chicory. Uh, I just had to see, he did set all the gates up but I just wanted to know where they're going before I let them out because um, yeah they can't, They certainly come running for it so we'll get, go get the cows and chuck them on. Yeah they are, they're just uh, not too far away so they're just um, getting a bit of shade under or next to the trees although it's not too bad today. Another gate that doesn't swing properly, fur truck hit it, that's why it looks a bit buckled. That was a few years ago now. Watch out, Gil. Don't go behind the gate. Right, so I'll just follow in front of them. They'll follow me. They know where to go. Come on in. So this is um, also part of the paddock that got destroyed by slugs. Slugs ate all the all the chicory that we planted the first time. We had to get it re-drilled, um, but it certainly come back good after the second drilling and, and a bit more slug bait down and killed everything. Nice and thick. Cows love it. So do we. Easy. What I should also say is that. They get put on here for two hours, so it's three o'clock now. So instead of milking in the afternoon, we put them on here. Then uh, at five o'clock, I'll come back and move them to their or their night paddock, their grass paddock, which is Dad's also set up. Um, this is their second rotation on here. So they've got this, uh, yeah, four more days after tomorrow, and then they'll be back on the the start of the third. So if we get a little bit more rain tonight, which hopefully, because there is a front supposed to be coming. Uh, it'll make this regrowth bolt, which would be awesome. Um, which is, yeah, this time last year we were drying out quite bad, as I've said before. But let's go and have a look at the maize, that's certainly um, bolting along anyway. Doesn't look so good around the edges, but that's what happens, it always looks like that. But it started tasseling probably 10 days ago, I think, and the maize opposite our house down there was a couple of days before Christmas, which is really early. Um, and I'm 1.8 metres high, so this will be well up over, oh, it'd, be, it'd be well over two metres, this would be two, 2.2 2. 2 metres maybe. Oh, it'd have to be two and a half metres high this maze. It's, we've had an awesome crop this year, we've had the best conditions we probably could have, so it's had no excuse. But all the cobs are forming, look at this. Look at this, three cobs, one, two, and the little one down here, I don't know if that'll actually do much, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bloody good crop this year. I um sort of hoping it might go uh, I might go 25 or 26 tons a heck there. Which um, even that might be a little bit light, 27, I don't know. We'll soon find out in um in March, the start of March I think it might be ready. Righto, so that's the first herd done for the afternoon, or oh, well, the start of the afternoon I guess, now it's just time to go and mix up a load down at, um, for my cows down the bottom, mix up a load and um, put them on the feed pad. We'll see you down there. Just down at the maize stack, uh, I've just got to unsheet it, I put the tarp back over every time I'm um, done feeding, just saves the birds, the chickens and the ducks getting into it and they eat all the all the corn kernels which is the good stuff so I want the cows to eat that rather than the birds um, and I also fill up every second day so today I'll fill up for today um, one, feed the cows then feed, um, fill up again which I'll do um, which will be for tomorrow so I only have to go, come in here every second day which saves me a bit of time but um, let's, uh, let's pull the carp, tarp up and have a look
So just put 1100 kilos of um, maize in there, wet weight, and um, and another 300 kilos of uh, stunder spit, and another 300 kilos of palm kernel. So now I'll just back it around there, um, tie the water up, or put some water in it, and then I'll go get the cows. Just tie the water up like this so it saves me standing here so I can go and get the cows uh, and get them going. Come on Ed. They'll come running, they love it eh? They run right back to the feed pad. And all they got to do is wait when they get there, so it's not much point of running. However, so the cows are just coming back. You can see them there. Uh, I come back to the feed pad, shut those gates, so they just wait there. Um, because there's no point me feeding out, then going to get them and waiting till they get back. So they might as well wait while I um, finish putting the water in. And then it takes them some days, it might take 10 or 15 minutes from the back paddock, so it saves me a bit of time. Uh, we're going to feed out in the feed troughs now, I guess. So it's looking looking pretty good now. It's looking pretty damp and um, damp and moist. I mainly just put the water into um, so they don't get so dehydrated when they're eating it because it's quite dry. So once, uh, once they get back to the paddock, they don't all run for the trough and drain it and break bullcocks. And um, I find it, it does work. I reckon it works anyway. Bit of a lolly scramble to get on here. Come on girls, look out. 194, she's always at the front leaning on the gates. Always. Amazes me how there's uh, so much of a picking order with pedal. Jump up here so I don't get run over. It is spitting a little bit and it's um, there are some dark clouds around so that's good it's not supposed to hit tonight till about 12 or 4 o'clock if the front does come through uh, and then it's supposed to be fine again tomorrow so if we could get 15 to 20 mils out of it it'd be ideal it would set us up for a, for a week to two weeks um, but it is what it is we can't do much about it so that's pretty much just the reason that we um, we, we feed supplement uh, through from sort of December through to to the end of milking through to May or um, April is just because we're so reliant on rain and we, and we usually don't get it that we have to find an alternative to feed our to feed our stock. If it rained um, every week and, and it stayed green and, and we had heaps of grass, it's way easier, but we don't. So this is the alternative and, 
and that's the reason that we do it. The girls have just finished their dinner. They've been on for about an hour because I got held up doing some things. Right, onto the grass. Or into their paddock, I should say. Welcome, here you are. Enjoy. Come on. Right, so they're all in there, happy as. Just shut them in. So they're done for the night. Lock them up. Now we're going to um, shift the other ones onto their night paddock and set the shed up and I'm done. Uh, home time to see the kids. Come on girls, come on. So hopefully, hopefully they're, they're pretty well trained. So they should come out the way they went in. Uh, looks like I might get wet, but that's fine, that's good. Come on girls, come on! Here they come. Come on! Come on girls! Oh, I'm just uh, hiding under the walnuts here. This is our uh, walnut trees, they're, uh, I don't know how old they'd be, they'd be, oh, they'd be 70 or 80 years old, maybe they're pretty big. Um, but the cows found the paddock. So I'm just trying to stay a little bit dry. That's pretty much it for this video and thanks for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do and we'll see you next time.